Good morning, Rock Church, my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson, and it is Solitude Saturday. That's right. It is Solitude Saturday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to take some good time today. We're going to rejoice in him. We're going to have our minds set, ready to go and do what the Lord will have us to do. Sister Johnson, it's good to see you there. See you there. Who else going to be popping on right now? right at 6.30. Well, look, I'm going to pray so we can get into the word of God. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. God, we thank you for loving us the way that you do, for taking care of us. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for giving us comfort. Thank you for giving us peace. Thank you, God, for giving us direction. Thank you, God, for giving us hope. Thank you, God, for the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus sitting at the right hand of God interceding for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ordering our steps and our stops. Father, we thank you for giving us a realm of word this morning. And for some who are listening to this afternoon and others this evening, we thank you, God, that you have a word just for us. God, I ask that you keep our hearts open, that we may always hear what you have said and do what you call us to do. God, we thank you speaking so ever ever so clear right now this moment in jesus name let god's people say amen all right elder brooks good to see you this morning i see my sister emily all right girl go ahead man oh man well look we are wrapping up our study series on we're being fearfully and wonderfully made we wrapping that up today and we're going to start something new tomorrow I look forward to that. So what we're going to be talking about that relates to we are fearfully, wonderfully made. We were not only fearfully, wonderfully made, we were created to what? In Christ Jesus to do good works, y'all. That's right. We were created to do good works in Christ Jesus. So being created by God, right? Being at a place and position that God has really desired to create us. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I think about that for a moment, I'm like, my God, God took time to create me. Yeah. Yeah, he took time to create you. Yeah. You're very distinguished. You're very unique. I know that we can be our worst critic. And we know we can probably be not happy about everything. But God did take his time to create us. And brothers and sisters, he created us in a way that it... it, it we, we should see the uniqueness of who we are and whom we to belong to. Yeah, we should embrace that. When you, if you're a parent and you, you, you look at your children and you know, you sometimes you reflect, maybe they're a little older, but you, sometimes you, you have reflection and you go back and look at your pictures of when your children were younger and you look at those pictures and you get that, you get that, oh, kind of feeling in your heart, right? You look at your babies you know, maybe they're adults now. You look at them now and say, yeah, they still my babies. But you think about, man, how God has blessed you with your children. And I'm going to tell you something, man. God looks at, look at us just like that. That, man, he's, he's blessed by the fact that he has given us life and breath. So you are created in such a way. The Bible says, fearfully and wonderfully made. You are created in such a way. That, man, you should always feel the comfort and the peace of God through the trials, through the good times, hey, through the cold times like it is outside. You should feel very, very, very blessed the fact that God took time to create us. So, brothers and sisters, you know, he did that for his purpose, though, not, not, not just because he, he didn't have anything to do. He created you and I for his purpose. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, we, for we are God's handiwork. Wow. <laughs> his handiwork, his workmanship. He, he designed you and I. <laughs> My God. Think about that for a moment. He just didn't put something together when he created us. We his handiwork. The Bible says we were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
I really appreciate this passage here. And sometimes this passage is overlooked because of, you know, the other two passages that come before this, which is very important. In fact, this is what that passage says in verse 8 and 9 in Ephesians chapter 2. It says, for it is by grace that you have been saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Come on, somebody. He created us, right? We were saved by grace through faith, not something we have done. And it's just a gift. In verse 9, it says, not by works, so that no one can boast. In other words, you, you can't work for this. We can't work for this. This is, this is God's design. We were fearfully, wonderfully made, created. We were created, brothers and sisters. Look at the Bible talking about creating Christ Jesus to do good work. And so Paul wanted the church to understand that. Not only that, it was because of salvation, we can go ahead and do this good work now. Oh, we, 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 we are in right standing with God, you know, and, and being in right standing because he created us. We, we walked out of being right standing because what Adam did, Adam and Eve done. So in order to get back in right standing with God, we had to come to God. He chose us. We had to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Come on, somebody. Now, hey, man, we are in right standing with God. Because he created us to do good works in Jesus. So what are these good works? What, what is it that we are called to do? Because we're not working for salvation. Salvation already has been done through the cross. Now it's like, what are the good works we were created to do? Oh, my God. Well, you have to release your faith to Solitude Saturday. And you got to understand that you were created well, in Christ Jesus to do good work. People are looking for purpose, man. What am my purpose? You were created to do good work. Now, hey, God has given us opportunity. Give us different vocations. God give us opportunity to have different skill sets and all of that. That's real good. That's all good. But you got to take your purpose with your skill set. You got to take your purpose with your job. You got to take your purpose. That good purpose that God has given us, man, is just an avenue and a platform for something to be heard. Now, brothers and sisters, listen, we're going to keep it simple, saints. It's not rocket science. Remember that God prepared what he want us to do a long time ago because the Bible said in advance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I'm going to give you three things that we can take on our jobs. We can take it, whatever vocation you have, these three things that are important about these good works. Number one, the good work of the Great Commission. That means evangelism. That's right. Evangelism is spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witnesses or witnessing, witnessing. In other words, this is what I'm doing. I'm evangelizing. You see what I'm doing? I'm doing these devotions every day. I am giving, I'm preaching God's word. I'll be on the streets. Rock Church, we got this piece we call moving from our seats into the streets. We out there 27 weeks, man. We did it this year on Wednesdays from 5.30, 8 o'clock. We out on the streets, man. Every Wednesday night, we out there preaching the gospel, feeding the people. That is evangelism. The other evangelism that he called each and every one of us is due to is to share our faith. We can share our faith wherever we go. I don't care what profile job you have. I don't care what vocation you have in life. You to share your personal testimony about God. That is the good work. The second thing I want to leave you with is service in the church. You don't make no difference, man. You don't have to work for the church, but work for a church, but you have to have service. You got to be a part of a congregation. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And we can participate in different classes, activities. And as you know, we can also pray for those in church. We can volunteer our time, our treasure, our service in church. What else we can do, man? We can also go and get counsel for, for church. You know, from the church leaders. This is important. These are good works. You cannot be a part of God's kingdom and not part of his church. It just, it don't work that way. And the third thing is charity. We need to understand, hey, man, we have to have generosity, goodwill. We need to be have kind. We have to have that. We have to be kind-hearted people. These are the good works that we were created to do in Christ Jesus. People are trying to figure out all the other things in life and not, not, not understand as a Christian, 
You were created for this. God created us, all mankind, for his good works. Either we know it or not, but those who are listening, you are now held accountable. <laughs> Too late. You can't put your hands in your ears. I can't hear you, Pastor Rob. Yes, you did. You heard the word of God. These are the good works, brothers and sisters. You are what? Fearfully, wonderfully made. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Even, I'm telling y'all, man, listen, I kid y'all not. This, <laughs> this 365-day daily devotion, man, that God he, he called me to, brothers and sisters, today is 321 days. Man, I am tired. <laughs> man, I'm not kidding y'all. Man, the preparation that goes be, behind closed doors, man, my mind, the energy, man, is spent for hours waking up at 3.30, 4 o'clock, getting in, man, praying and meditating, worshiping, then getting into the word and listening and preparing for what's to come. What is it that he wants me to say? These are the good works. Yes, you're going to be tired doing God's work, but I'm telling you, it's fulfilling because other people are growing. Other people are being inspired. This is what God does. And if I wasn't doing this, what I'm going to be doing? But I'm going to tell you this. Watch Watch the fruit that comes out of your life when you are engaged in what God has called us to do. You can't sit on the sideline. Don't sit there. Because if you sit there, you're going to be incomplete. You want to be complete with the good works. Hey, man, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Get connected with your church and be about person that give charity. I am telling you, these are the good works, man, God prepared in advance for us to do. You ought to say amen. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name on this solitude Saturday. We thank you, God, for hitting us with the idea of what we are called to do, where we are called to be, God. God, if someone's an attorney, we're supposed to share our faith in the law office. God, when we, whatever vocation and jobs that we have, we ought to, we are called to share our testimony. God, we ought to talk to people about who you are and what you've done, even in our lives and what you're looking to do in their lives. God, I pray that we get connected with our church, our local church body, that God, we can connect so that the work that you prepared in advance for us to do, we can be in alignment with that and that we will give the charity goodwill from our heart, God, and, and serve the church and serve humanity. God, I pray that we can see what this purpose is all about as you have fearfully and wonderfully made us and God that we are in Christ Jesus and you prepared this work well in advance. Hallelujah, God, I thank you that you have already prepared our destiny. God, I pray that we walk in that. I pray that we walk where you are carrying us and you're taking us and that our mindset will be ready and God that we won't fall in fatigue and laziness and, and God and say, what is it that you want me to do? And then you show us we won't do it. God, I pray that will not be our testimony from this day forward. We're going to march, oh God, with the, with, the, with the word of God and the, the works that you've already given us. God, I pray that we will see not only being fearfully and wonderfully made, but we was designed by you in preparation to do good works in Christ Jesus. May you be glorified based on our response. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen. Y'all just been kissed. On this Solitude Saturday, brothers and sisters, I am telling you, boy, 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 you have everything that God has put in you for good works. It's already in you. Come on, man. Join, join us all. Let's, let's encourage other brothers and sisters to do the same. Come on, man. Preach that gospel. Share your testimony. Be connected to your local church. Do what they're doing. Get involved and be about charity. And I'm telling you, man, it's nothing like being in alignment with the word of God. And I could, and I imagine even, even though I am getting tired of doing this every day, but I can just imagine Jesus saying to me, well done, good and faithful servant. That means a lot right then and there. Well done, good and faithful servant. I'm Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson. Brothers and sisters, it is a delight to come before you every single day. But I can tell you this, without a doubt, 
if you go ahead and do the good works that you were called to do, you will be centered in the will of God. I love you. I delight to see you every day. And I hope that you take these challenges, evangelize, share your faith, be a part of your local church, and give. Be about charity. And you'll see you'll feel so much better inside. Have a solitude Saturday. Take care of yourself.